What's up fam? The Wolf is here with another movie review for you all. Today, we're talking about Whitney Houston, I Wanna Dance With Somebody, and trust me, I've got a lot to say. Whether you're a fan of the genre or just looking for a new film to watch, you won't want to miss my thoughts on this one. So, grab some popcorn, hit play, and let's dive in. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join the pack and stay up to date on all my latest reviews. Let's go! A joyful, heart-wrenchingly, and heartwarming tribute to Whitney Houston, one of the greatest female RB pop vocalists of all time, and her music, tracing her rise from relative obscurity to musical glory. At the American Music Awards in 1994, Whitney Houston enters the stage wearing all black while being applauded by the audience. Whitney is attempting to sing in a church choir in 1983 in New Jersey, but her mother Sissy, who is tough on her daughter, pushes Whitney to improve. She also resides with her brothers Gary and Michael as well as her father John. She spends time apart from Sissy and John with her brothers because of their regular arguments. Robin Crawford and Whitney later become friends. They begin as the best of friends before becoming romantically involved and moving in together. One evening, Sissy is about to sing when renowned record producer Clive Davis enters. In order to persuade Whitney to perform Live, she lies that her voice is gone. The entire audience, but especially Clive, is impressed by Whitney's performance of The Greatest Love of All. In order to sign her, he later gets in touch with her and invites her family to a recording studio. Despite John's conditions, she ultimately decides to collaborate with Clive. On the Merv Griffin show, Whitney gives her first major live performance. Whitney is badly lit and the music is slow, which irritates Sissy, who intervenes to make sure her daughter looks well. John hires himself as the manager of Whitney as her career starts to soar. Robin rejects John's advice to go on dates with men. Later, Whitney is alleged to have slept with Jermaine Jackson while recording a song with him, which enrages Robin. She is criticized for selling out and not sounding black enough despite having hits like How Will I Know and I Wanna Dance With Somebody, Who Loves Me. She is booed when her candidacy is announced at the Soul Train Awards. Whitney encounters RB artist Bobby Brown there, who counsels her to ignore those who are disparaging her reputation. Bobby and Whitney start dating each other. After a few months, Bobby asks her to marry him but he later confesses that his ex-girlfriend Kim became pregnant as a result of an intoxicated hookup. She becomes so furious that her driver stops in the middle of the road, but Bobby pursues her and professes his regret passionately enough for her to agree to the proposal. Robin, who has come to notify Whitney that Oprah Winfrey wants to interview her, learns the news. Whitney, who is viewed by her family and viewers across the nation, sings the national anthem during Super Bowl 25 in 1991, and she receives a fantastic reception. Acting piques her attention. She is asked to put off her wedding so that Clive can find a script for her called The Bodyguard. Despite initially declining, she changes her mind when she finds out that Kevin Costner requested her for the role. She records her own version of I Will Always Love You for the film and performs the song at a concert in honor of Nelson Mandela's release from prison in 1994. Throughout the movie, we see Whitney's relationship with Bobby Brown and the birth of their daughter, Bobby Christina. After going on tour, she wants to return home to be with her family. She discovers Bobby is not home and finds out later that he has been having affairs with other women. When she tries to kick him out of the house and he balks, Bobby Christina becomes irate, and the two argue. Whitney and Clive had a meeting about the fact that despite releasing seven big songs over the past eight years, Whitney has yet to release an album. Later, Whitney confronts John about how he handled her finances and ends their relationship. She starts to allow Pat, her sister-in-law, to manage her. Whitney pays John a visit as he lies on his deathbed but he tells her that she is no longer his little princess. Whitney skips John's funeral after he passes away. Her drug abuse worsens over time to the point where it limits her vocal range and results in a terrible concert performance. Clive advises her to seek rehab after she brings Bobby Christina to his home. She does so and sadly says goodbye to Bobby Christina. 
Whitney files for divorce from Bobby in 2009. She keeps on making music and keeping up her relationship with Bobby Christina. She goes to Beverly Hills for the Grammys in February 2012. After getting a drink at a nearby pub, she goes back to her hotel room and sings to herself in the mirror while she's crying. She sings her well-known medley of I Loves You, Porgy, and I am telling you I'm not going, I have nothing in 1994 at the American Music Awards. In the closing titles, it is said that Houston died on February 11, 2012, from a drug-related drowning incident, and that she is still the best-selling black artist of all time. Well, that's all for this movie's review. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on Whitney Houston, I Wanna Dance With Somebody and found my review helpful in deciding whether to watch the film or not. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you like the video, and leave a comment with your own thoughts on the movie. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join the Wolf Nation, because there's always more